birds and birds. And some fast folk are gonna realize I just said birds twice. And the truth is, we might not have bees in the near future to fill in the rest of the idiom. And you might think that bees are okay, you might think bees are out to get you, but regardless of the opinions, regardless of all the silliness, we need bees. And the bees need us as well. And to keep our lavish lifestyles of choice and food variety, and as well as our ecosystems, I'm here to persuade you that we should take more care of our bees. Now, to fully understand the issue, we need to look at the problems that we'll face without bees, the causes that are causing the decline in bee populations, and some, I'll bring some unique solutions. So, let's look at the problem. The problems that we'll face without bees is a lack in food variety. We know that bees pollinate flowers and flowers do their thing, but do you know that our 35% of our crops, according to New York Times on February 26, 2016, 35% of our crops are pollinated and rely on pollination. And that's quite a bit. That's quite a bit. And it's not just the food, but it's the food industry as well that will face issues. According to Forbes on October 14th, 2019, Honeybees, native bees, and flies deliver an economic value of $235 to $575 billion in food. Now that is a lot of money. The second problem that we'll face, I also mentioned it in the intro, was our ecosystems. Kind of the same thing with food. Our food needs pollinations because flower need pollinations. A lot of floral plants will need that um, pollination. And our native ones, which are important to our personal local ecosystems, will be in decline if these bees can't get to them. And bees have a special relationship with plants, especially native bees with native plants. According to Newsweek, November 27, 2018, Native bees hold up the ecosystem by pollinating these native plants. For example, the bumblebee. Uh, they have a special way of pollinating that honeybees can't do, and it is called buzz pollination. And that's their way of buzzing the flower just right to get the most pollen. And more pollen that comes out of these flowers, the more effective the pollination will be. And without these, this pollination, this bee magic, there will be a collapse in the plants, the f animals that rely on those plants, and so on and so on. Now that we looked at some problems that we'll face without bees, let's go look at some causes that the bees are having to face. So, PBS on October 6, 2016, says that colony collapse disorder is a perfect storm of bee stressors and CCD for short is what most experts all agree that is what's happening with the bees with the sudden deaths, sudden empty hives, just a mess. And so a lot of these bee stressors have to be vi um, yes, viruses, mites, and also pesticides. All those factor into bee deaths and it is disrupting what we know about bee lives. Um, our second cause is, our second cause is the ecosystem itself. The lack of variability. Just like people, we need a variety of food and the bees are lacking of it. Um, The conservation on May 22nd, 2018 says that we need bees for food security and to maintain um, a healthy ecosystem and that health, food security is what every living being depends on. Um, Wired on April 29th, 
2015 says our society changes to the ecosystem, the environment, how we're moving into places is affecting where our bees get their native food as well as their native habitats. All this is, you know, making it difficult for the bees to continue on with their regular life cycles. And now that we've looked at the causes the bees are trying to fight through, let's look at some unique solutions. Okay, so solution number one is we can be more mindful of the pesticides that we, we choose in our food. And what I mean that, I don't mean just organic foods. Um, bee culture on October 5th, 2015 says that a lot of organic produce, um, organic pesticides I mean, is just as lethal to bees as come synthetic pesticides. So, instead of organic, I am proposing a couple different options in the food scale. Wa option one, buying locally. Well and good on October 16, 2013, says that local growers, you might need to do research on your local growers, um, will most likely use less pesticides than commercially grown crops. And, you know, less is more when it comes to this issue. Another option is to buy certified bee-friendly uh, produce. A Guardian article on February 14, 2020 interviewed a bee-friendly almond farm which uses sprinkles in wildflowers within their orchard, orchards of almonds which gives the bees a little bit of variety. They also use honeybees as well as um, bumblebees to help pollinate their almonds. They have been finding great growth. But the Guardian also warns that there will be a price to be bee friendly. I mean, no pesticides. They're going to have to go for other measures. Just kind of how pro organic is more expensive. Bee friendly will be pretty expensive as well. Now, if both of those options don't satisfy, I have another one. And it is growing your own produce. Growing your own produce lets you grow whatever you'd like right in your backyard you know exactly what goes in it and funny enough having your own garden which is my second solution gardening bee friendly plants and if you're bold enough beekeeping itself now bee friendly plants um there's a lot of them I and mean, honestly just growing anything helps bees like flowers but there are specific native flowers. You get bonus points for that. And just to name a few native and edible flowers. What are people doing? Um, I don't know if you can hear the screeching, but either way, um, edible and native flowers, um, lavender, sage, grapes. We got native grapes in California, which is pretty nice. Um, buckwheat, which is a great grain. Um, there's so much more, I just can't think of it right now because it's off the top of my head. Um, but there's plenty of flowers that are bee friendly, just as many non edible ones, but just as beautiful, and it will help the ecosystem out just in your backyard. Um, as for the beekeeping, honeybee. Uh, keeping is a very interesting process, but it is quite an investment. But you get honey and pollinated plants. But if you don't want to go with that whole route, you could always just have a little, little box with paper straws. Mason bees will love you and also pollinate your plants if you got them. So today I try to persuade you that we need a little bit more bee love in our lives. And next time, I hope you'll consider <laughs> you'll consider more of what bees do for us for free, as well as consider my solutions. Thank you.